thing I want to do at 88 years of age is to be walking here with a banner. I find it absolutely disgraceful the, the way the government is treating me. A lot of my friends who are up north who have come down with us today, you know, they're getting, they're getting told now they've got to move out the council houses because they've got too many bedrooms that they're not using anymore and a lot of the old people are struggling with the pensions, etc. So it's certainly biting hard now. The cuts are hitting disabled people the hardest and unfortunately we have lost an awful lot of people, disabled people. They've lost their lives. 10,000 people have died because of these cuts and that's why I'm here today, to remember those people and to say it is not right for the needy to pay for the sins of the greedy. Government have been putting the budget for the fine rescue services, massive cuts. Uh, within my own region, they're proposing to get rid of over 800 firefighters uh, just by cuts of the budget, closing stations. Disastrous decimation of the fire service. The idea that the NHS is safe in the coalition's hands is complete and utter bunkum. We've had a lot of our members losing their jobs, a considerable amount of members. We've had a lot of members downgraded. The whole reorganisation brought about by the Health and Social Care Bill has been disastrous and it will be disastrous for the NHS. It's basically privatisation. We are the blood. You are the stuff. Get your hands. Just by jobs. We are the blood. You are the stuff. Get your hands. Just by jobs. We had eight years of a Tory council and they basically cut over 200 million from the council budget. A lot of that has meant that there's been cuts in some services but also massive cuts in people's pay. So people have lost their allowances for working weekends and unsocial hours and shift pay. Um, they, they lost 10% last year but this year they're going to lose a lot if, um, if they go ahead with it, implementing it in November. So there's still a lot of anger about that because, you know, it's really unfair that the poorest, actually the poorest council workers, people earning 15 to 18,000 are the ones bearing the brunt of the cuts and they didn't create this crisis. greenest government ever. It's absolutely scandalous the way that they've both sidelined the issue of climate change at exactly the same time that the issue of climate change is more prominent, more real for millions and billions of people around the world. People worry about what's happening to our weather, the reality of increased food prices as the climate changes are hitting lots of people. We campaign against free labour in culture education and the charity sector where the entire sector is run by free workers um, posing as interns and volunteers um, and it means that if you can't afford to work for free you can't work in these sectors so we're campaigning against the carrot that they dangle in front of us to make us think there will be a job at the end or there will be a life at the end and we want them to take their carrot and shove it on workers' rights for a generation. You now have to work two years instead of one year before you've got the right to challenge an unfair dismissal. Um, you've got the introduction of fees into the employment tribunals that are at such levels that they will cut people off claiming, even if they've got you know, a very good case. You've got um, these new ridiculous employee worker contracts where you basically you have, you're given £2,000 worth of shares and you sign off any rights that you'd have, unfair dismissal, notice on maternity rights, and a whole other host of rights. We thrust PCS members into civil service. You know, Maud's announced that he's basically going to rip up our terms and conditions. That's going to be put in place as early as the new year, and we just won't stand for it anymore. Combined with that, he's cutting our access to facility time 
so we can't even represent members properly. There is a lot of harassment, threatening, bullying, extortion by the management of the Karelian and we are fighting for it. We have been uh, gone about 21 days strike since last uh, February and still the management is victimizing but we will fight till end and we want our recognition at any cost. This is our main demand with the Karelian management. We've taken strike action um, and we've done loads of demonstrating, lobbying and all sorts, but we're just not getting anywhere. They're not listening to us, basically. Our delegation on this demo is fighting very strongly for a general strike. We want to fight, but we think everybody needs to fight together. And on November the 30th, when we had the strike over pensions, our, our members felt very confident because they were fighting with other trade unionists. That's what we need more of. We've got to have a general strike in this country to keep this, these Tories out. After the sellout of December, UCU played a prominent role trying to get the strikes back off the ground, striking with UCU and PCS, NUT, uh, and Unite and others, EIS and so on. So really that's the game now, how do we rebuild a coalition to get back that kind of strength of November and at the same time have the kind of organisation where we can fight against a sellout. National Monetary Fund has said that austerity measures are the wrong thing to get the economy moving again. We've got to get that message to our stupid government. They are just set on ideological cuts for the sake of it. They're not thinking about our economy. And if that means we have to do general strike, we need general strike. I think we need a general strike to really, to un people to understand what's going on. People have got to get off their backsides and do something positive. RMT's message today is that you can't talk sense to these people, they're not listening. The only thing they'll listen to is power. And workers on this demonstration have got power, it's just the TUC leadership have not seen fit to organise them in order to use their power. And what we're calling for clearly is demonstrations, yes, but we need a general strike. We need coordinated strike action to stop these bastards from carving up the welfare state. And that's our simple message today. And if we don't do that, then we'll be back here in 18 months, but there'll be fewer of us. The movement, will, the heads will go down. We've got, an, we've got an option, a choice at the moment. And if we take it, we can win. If we don't take it, then watch out. When we take strike action, it, you know, it's, a, it's a last resort thing that we have to do. But Unfortunately, to protect the communities, all of a sudden we have to take a stand. We will support them definitely. We are solidarity always there for any victim, any victim by government and for any intruder by the government. I'm sure the numbers are going to give a, give a TUC the confidence to go ahead and try and call one. I'm sure they are. I'll, I'll certainly be there. People would love a general strike. I don't know anyone you say, if you want a general strike, they don't think it's a good idea. we just got to make it happen. Have to escalate, but it has to not just be the unions. People who are precarious and not unionised need to go on strike too and find ways to strike. Well, I think we should be going out on strike for a general strike, and also I think because it's a, a strike against the government, then it should be legal. Because I know they try and stop us from striking this country because we've got the worst anti-trade union laws in, in, in Europe. So uh, they're going to try and stop us from going out on strike, but we believe it's a uh, it's a fight against government and not a fight against your individual businesses. There are legal ways that you could um, that you could call a general strike. But let's be fair, if there was a general strike, they can't put everyone in jail. And there is a phrase that I probably shouldn't use as a lawyer, but it's better to break the law than to break the court.
if we could join in with that. Even if we don't have an industrial That's dispute, the rich, not the poor. we should organise well, solidarity civil action war. in workplaces. That's the rich, not the Follow poor. the brilliant well, example of the HMRC, the rich, the PCS the members well, in Coventry Tax war. Office who staged a 15-minute walkout last week to greet Francis Maud. I've been over to Portugal and Greece, and I've spoken to the trade unionists over there, and their level of politicisation and class consciousness uh, ought to put us to shame. And they understand what needs to be done, and they're doing it. And we've got to learn lessons from them. We need to get coordinated strike action across the public and private sectors in this country and we should try to coordinate it along with our brothers and sisters in Portugal, Greece, Spain and other countries suffering from this EU austerity policies. Tories go on your bike! What we need to take our fight! Tories go on your bike! What we need to take our fight! Tories go on your bike! What we need